how's it going? I'm Jolene, this is Leah with Sanctuary Gardens and today we're pruning our raspberry uh, bushes. So I wanted to um, explain the two different methods for pruning ever-bearing raspberries um, and then also show you my training system. Why do you need to prune your raspberries? Um, first, it's to remove any dead disease stuff. It's, it's keeping up with the health of your plants. And the, the second reason is it does increase uh, production yield of your raspberries. It also helps make sure that things don't get out of control because raspberries have a tendency to want to get larger and larger. And as you can see, they encroach upon other areas. And I, I have raspberry, you know, uh, beginning in my strawberry uh, planter right here next to them. So uh, pruning them just keeps it everything somewhat manageable as well. Best time to prune is uh, typically January through March here in the Pacific Northwest. Typically it's recommended in, when they're dormant and that's when I prune them is when they are still dormant, there aren't any leaves on them. There are two methods when it comes to pruning uh, your ever bearing raspberries. We're gonna go through both methods and I'll explain the pros and cons of each and how to do each. First, before we get into that, let's talk about the life cycle of your raspberry canes. And this will help you understand the two different methods and which one you you would like to do. And there are two kinds of canes when it comes to um, your ever-bearing raspberries. The first one we're going to talk about is primocanes and these are, are the new growth that your raspberry puts out every year. It's usually the luscious, it's the tallest, the healthiest green. They're the those new shoots that you see popping up around all your old canes. All these canes that you see here are last year's growth. So um, this one here, this one here, these are last year's primocanes. But around the base of those are this year's primocanes. They're starting to come up and they're just, they're little green, you know, tips just popping up all around last year's growth. So that's this year's new primocane. Primocanes do produce fruit. They usually produce fruit at the very top, like this one, for example. This is a primocane from last year. And you can see at the very tip here are all these little like uh, spent blooms and also where the raspberries used to be. This is where the primocane produced its fruit at the very top. There are none much, uh, this is the last flower, the last bud, and there's nothing down the rest of the, the primocane there. And they produce their fruit in the fall, only at the top. The second type of cane is floricane. Floricanes are the second year primocanes. They are their second year growth and they still produce fruit. They will not produce any fruit in that top growth where they produced last year. They will now produce fruit down here. And usually they will produce what we call lateral growth. They'll start, there's some buds here along the edges of this. Those will come out and produce a lot of fruit. So the floricanes, these last year's primocanes are now called floricanes this year. This year's floricanes are going to be producing fruit in your early summer, kind of late spring, early summer, usually around June through July, August, um, they'll be producing their fruit. And then the floor, the primocanes will take over and start producing fruit in the fall. What about last year's floricanes? Last year's floricanes, are done. They produce fruit. The first year they were primocanes, they produce fruit in the top. The second year they produce fruit in their lower half. The third year they're done. They're spent. They need to be taken out. So let's talk about method number one, the easiest one. And this is the method that you're only going to be producing berries in the fall. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to prune. You're just going to take and cut back literally your entire, every cane and cut it to the ground. What that does is it gets rid of all your spent floricanes and all this year's floricanes and everything new, all those primocanes that are going to be growing, just take off and grow big and they produce your fall crop. And usually it's a very large crop. So it's basically you're cutting it down so all you're producing are primocanes. This is an easy method for a lot of people because I mean, it takes no thought. You literally just, you know, could take a wheat whacker to it and just cut it all down. And then, you know, you get a really big, vigorous growth. And if you like uh, making like freezer jam or, you know, just having a really big bumper crop, this might be your best way to do it because you get a very large crop. And, and in the, the kind of the off season for raspberries, a lot of people don't imagine raspberries in the fall. Okay, so method number two now. Now this pruning method is a little bit more tedious. 
uh, but it does produce your spring and your fall crops. So if you want maybe a little bit less berries, but throughout the growing season, this is the method you're going to use. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and you're gonna cut the spent floor canes, the floor canes that are on their third year, that are at the end of their life cycle, that are dead and done producing, you're gonna cut those at ground level. And then all of the floor canes this year that I have that were produced last year and are ready to produce lower down, you're gonna take those, you're gonna train them, and you just cut off usually that top area that is spent and it's not gonna produce any more fruit, you just cut that off. And then I train those and I'll show you how I do that and then I leave them be. And I do thin it out a bit, so we're gonna talk about that as well. It is more involved, but if this is how you want to have, if you wanna have berries throughout your season, this is the method to go with. So I'm gonna break this down into four pretty simple steps. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go through and figure out what are last year's floor canes that are at the end of their life cycle and they're in the third year and they're done. And usually these are pretty easy. For me, it's really easy because what last year with my pruning system, I attached a little uh, twist tie to them. So I know exactly which ones that I needed to cut off at ground level. But if you haven't done that, then basically they're the ones that are completely dead and I'll show you an up close how the bark is different. And if you were to snap them in half, I mean, they're just completely dead all the way. There's not gonna be any green in the inside. This here is a last year's floor cane that produced fruit all the way down to here, as you can see, that produced fruit. Um, and it is ready to be cut off. Now, ways to tell is first of all, look at the difference between these two barks. This one here is kind of grayish and kind of peeling, and this one looks fresh and still really pliable in a way. You can also see some buds beginning along, along it here, down at the base. These are gonna become sh uh, lateral shoots that come off the side of it and are gonna produce fruit. As you can see, this one here, how it has uh, shoots coming off, those are what these are going to become. And this is what produced fruit last year, all these lateral shoots. So this is the way, easy way to tell that this is a floor cane ready to be pruned. Already this looks a lot better. And I've literally just gone through and taken out all those spent floor canes. And, uh, Here's a great example of the difference you can see between these, how this one just has all these extra um, branches coming off of it versus these do not. They have buds in preparation for doing this because uh, this year these are gonna be producing the fruit. So once we get all these out, it just clears up the space, just cleans it up really nicely. So now what we're, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm going to thin the row out and then um, I'm just gonna thin it out and kind of get it to the point where I have kind of two main rows here that I'm going to then attach to the wire next. Here's an example where we have a really nice thick uh, floor cane for this year. And I'm gonna get rid of this one. It's too small. It's just gonna end up crowding out the other space and prevent good growth. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'll probably end up getting rid of this one too and this one. And maybe both of these here. And this one. You want to give space for your canes to grow and not have competition with other uh, things that are going to shade out the sunlight and just uh, crowd it out. Okay, now we're done with the first two steps. And so the last two steps I do kind of at the same time. What I do is I pull the branches either to one side or the other of my um, wire here, which needs to be tightened a little bit, but I'll have my husband do that later. Um, and I'm just going to take, this is, um, twist ties that you would find like a grocery store. I have a whole bunch of them. So repurpose here. <laughs> you could use, um, twine if you wanted something more biodegradable. And I hope to move to that at some point, but I also want to, um, use what I have. So, um, and usually I attach it to the top wire and then the second wire down. We have three wires total. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip off that top section that was flowering from last year. It's not gonna produce anything this year. So I usually chop it to right about there. So what I did is I just took off, you could see all these spent um, blooms here. You get down and that was the last one. So I just snipped it right there and there's a bud right at the tip ready to create uh, more fruit. I wanted to show here the system that we use is kind of a T system. Uh, we have three of the layers here with wire attached. Now, my husband does need to tighten the wire. Actually, I can kind of do it, but uh, we just have these 
eyes here and then you have the wire attached. This process is, like I said, it's a little more tedious, particularly if you're doing my training method, which, you know, it's not mine, but it's the one that I use. Um, so yeah, I just attached all these along the, the edges. You can see I've separated them. So there's kind of a space in the middle. What's really great about training your, your ra the raspberries like this is that it leaves that area in the middle open for all those primocanes that are going to be coming up pretty soon, that, that gives, gives them space to just grow straight up and just really kind of take, take off there. And then um, it also is really nice when I'm pruning, I know exactly which ones these next year are gonna be the ones that were completely taken out because they're gonna be spent and I can easily identify them with my little green ties. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We have some ex other exciting videos coming out this year. As always, Go out and grow something. God bless. Are you eating dirt? I think you just put a big clump in your mouth, didn't you? Is it tasty? Ew. I better go get